On the other hand, if you were a, th a thin person carrying a hundred pounds yeah, on your yeah. back, people you know like, how many people would be like, yeah. wow, people you're like, amazing. Let's turn it into a TV show. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name's Nadia. Today's video, we are going to look at some fat acceptance TikTok, mainly from a group I found who did a podcast episode on fat phobia. It's two sort of thinner hosts interviewing a fat acceptance activist. And I don't really think this conversation is doing fat acceptance any favors. And this is like maybe a controversial take, but no one would choose to continue to be fat in a world where they absolutely hate fat people. So we actually talked a bit about this on my community page. I asked in a poll if y'all thought that obesity was a personal choice. And of the 3,000 who answered, over 80% of you said yes. I know it's a weird way to phrase it for basically the exact reason she said here. Of course, most people don't say, man, I'd love to be 200 pounds overweight. And it's really important in the conversation around obesity to remember that we don't all have the same nutrition education or background. Our mom told us when we were younger, if we ate a sugar, you drink a Diet Coke afterwards and it'll cancel out the sugar. She says something pretty honest at the end of this clip and I think it's a pretty important part of this nobody chooses to be obese puzzle. People think that I'm glorifying obesity by spreading this. I wouldn't recommend anybody be fat in this world. It is horrible. Mm. It is so traumatizing. It is so isolating. People are evil. They are cruel. Strangers think it's okay to tell you on the bus. Mm. You're fat. You should lose weight. You're disgusting. Like it's nonstop. And that leads to people isolating themselves and like seeking comfort through food. She started off saying nobody would choose to be fat and ended saying that isolation and food were general coping mechanisms for those same people. And that leads to people isolating themselves and like seeking comfort through food. While someone saying, I wanna be morbidly obese would sound crazy to a rational person, someone saying, I wanna feel good instead of feeling bad is a lot more understandable. Food is an incredibly accessible coping mechanism and surprisingly powerful actually. Eating activates the pleasure sensor of our brain. We release bits of dopamine when we eat, which is often called the feel good hormone. But then things like flavor, texture, food memories, all of those add to the pleasure of the eating experience. So when we're looking for an emotional pick-me-up, our favorite foods actually do a pretty good job at comforting us. And just like any other substance that's used for comfort, it can be abused. There's almost nothing in this world that can compare to the feeling of taking that first bite because I get that first flood of happiness that comes with it. Eating just makes everything better. The way food products are being engineered right now definitely isn't helping the obesity epidemic. There are a number of theories for why we as a population are getting bigger and bigger. And not surprisingly, none of those theories have anything to do with other people judging us in the gym or any other public space. We need to normalize fat people existing in every space yeah. possible, right? It's this is kind of a weird statement to make because not to sound insensitive, but this is already normal. Especially places like the gym. I think that we glorify people who are like super ripped and jacked and like all the stuff that they're able to do. But it's like, yes, that takes a lot of hard work. Of course, absolutely. You got there. Look at all your skills. Good for you. You're amazing. But the tone here is so condescending and they're making this observation like it's just arbitrary that we celebrate fitness and not like celebrating fitness has real utility. We can take it to the extreme like we can with anything, but overall we do want to glorify behaviors that contribute to the physical and mental health of the population. When you're in a bigger body, do you know how much extra work it takes to do half of the shit? Mental as well, not just physical. That's what I want to say right? too, like just getting into that space. Yeah. You deserve like yes. an award. Listen, it is not easy for a lot of people to go to the gym. 
I just got certified as a personal trainer and I feel awkward at the gym because I feel awkward everywhere. Wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud. Most of my friends I know who go to the gym and have been going to the gym say that they still feel awkward when they're there. And I know it's a different anxiety if you're plus sized. I don't want to diminish people's experiences, but I think fat acceptance would really benefit from trying to connect more with others and feeling awkward and uncomfortable in different situations. That's highly relatable. I would love if we could start listening to fat people and plus size people when they voice very real concerns and fears and insecurities. We've gotten to this trend of when a plus size person says, I don't wanna to go to the gym because I'm scared I'm gonna be pointed at and laughed at. And it is met with, no one is gonna be watching you at the gym because they're focused on their own workout. I wouldn't let it bother you. It's not helpful. <laughs> It's not helpful, right? I'm never trying to intentionally dismiss anyone. I try to go out of my way to understand people, but there are a lot of really universal human experiences that we all have that fat acceptance activists seem to think only happen to larger people. The gym is awkward for a lot of us. So maybe if you feel uncomfortable there, you're actually fitting in more than you even realize. This is the hypocrisy of fat phobia that drives me off the rails is that you are just hated for being fat, period. You yeah. cannot win. This is just not true. And it is the stuff I really hate seeing from fat activists. Convincing people that other people hate them for no reason is sharing your cognitive distortions with them. Cognitive distortions are basically like filters that our brain can process information through, but the filters distort the information in ways that make us feel bad about ourselves. No matter what you do, you can't win is a distorted reality. It is not a reality you should be inviting other people into and trying to connect with them over. Yeah. And people actually will say that they are doing this to you to make you come to and lose the weight. But what they're mm. actually doing is keeping you fat, making you more fat. If, but what they're mm. actually doing is keeping you fat, making you more fat. No, nobody else is keeping you fat or making you more fat. Unless you're a kid, basically, and somebody else is making decisions that you don't have control over. Most people already know that, but fat acceptance even through this podcast, is constantly working into their lesson plan that other people can and do have power over you. Oh. It's kind of frustrating to watch. And again, it sort of puts people off to their messaging. Nobody looks good blaming other people for their decisions. And that is spoken as someone who's done that in the past. Fat phobics actually cared about our health and our well-being. They would be doing what you're saying. They'd be celebrating us. Yeah. But what they do is they make fun of us at the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And they videotape us. You get made fun of at the gym. People stare at you. It's like, isn't this exactly where you want me to be? Yeah. Anyone who really does something like this is being a piece of crap, obviously. With that being said, I actually see people going out of their way to encourage overweight people when they're working out. I have never seen anyone bully anyone at the gym. We've talked a bit about this before, but I really think gym class ruined a lot of people's perceptions of exercise. Some of y'all have horror story backgrounds with working out from those years, and it is definitely harder to choose exercise when you have a lot of negative associations with it. That's actually why one of the first jobs a personal trainer has is to create positive experiences with their clients. So people and just tell you like, just get out there and do some exercise. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk yeah, about that. Please. Because even just going for a walk outside, okay? So it's it's free. So you don't have to worry about, you know, paying for a gym. Yeah. Let's imagine that I'm going to give you 100 pounds of weight and I'm going to yeah. give it to you to carry. Go for a walk. That's so hard. It's hard. People yeah. just don't get it. Literally the only people I have ever heard try to act like walking when you're 100 or more pounds overweight is the same as walking when you're in a healthy weight range are fat acceptance activists. Only them. 
it's like I am carrying extra weight. It is not just like go do it. It yeah. is hard is heavy and then i'm gonna have my internalized ableism my internalized fat phobia yeah i'm gonna hear these these words these horrific memories are gonna come into mm -hmm. my head i'm replaying things of judgment like you you can't even go this far like you're only going 10 minutes like you suck like you can barely walk you're out of breath like you're out of shape it stops us from doing yeah. what we need to do to keep well to get some movement in again want to reiterate that bad exercise memories do create aversions to exercise, but these thoughts she's sharing are more cognitive distortions. I'm very familiar with them, like I'm sure a lot of us are. It's not easy to challenge these thoughts. They feel very real in the moment, but they aren't real. And the sooner we can identify these filters for what they are, the less power they have over us. On the, on the other hand, if you were a, th a thin person carrying a hundred pounds yeah, on your yeah. back, people you know like, how many people would be like, yeah. wow, people you're like, amazing. Let's turn it into a TV show. This has got to be one of the dumbest things I've heard in a long time. And I don't actually think any of these people are stupid. So it's like they're all playing dumb for each other's comfort or entertainment. We've got the hosts here pretending like they don't understand why it would be a big deal for a thin person to walk around with a hundred extra pounds strapped to their body. Uh. People would think you're like, you know how some people yeah. do their workouts with those like body yeah, harnesses, yeah, yeah. right? Like with all those yeah. weights, everyone's yeah. like, they're so hardcore. Yeah. I'm hardcore every day. Yeah. <laughs> like, give me what some about of me? that. Like, I'm wearing it. I'm hardcore. It's just natural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have our guests here pretending that having a hundred plus extra pounds on your body is hardcore and natural. It really feels like they're all kind of humoring each other here, but it's kind of insulting to the people listening to it because it sounds like total bullshit. We are going to end on a weight loss progress from someone who's lost about 90 pounds in the last year. I took a couple, you know, I took some time off to rest and now it's game time, bitches. I picked this one because a lot of her messaging is about how it's our decisions over time that really add up to the results we get. And that is pretty relevant to the conversation today, I think. Losing weight, you really have to feel the cumulative effort of making the right decisions over time. And we don't really get that with making the wrong decisions. All right, we are going to go ahead and call this one here for today. Thank you so much for making it to the end if you're still here with me. Give the video a like if you liked it and let me know your thoughts down below. I actually did film a walk for this video, but I am still limping because of this patella injury. It's just not healed all the way yet and I gotta say it looks pretty dopey seeing me walk around like that so I might throw it up in the next one or I might just wait until I'm walking a little more normal and it's easier for me to look at. Either way I'll have another video up soon. Everybody take care, enjoy the end of summer, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!